This isn't just the sound of a subway grinding to a halt. It's something far stranger, something quietly revolutionary. Every day, in cities across the world, trains stop, lights flicker, and escalators hum. But what if that daily rhythm was hiding a secret source of power? In Barcelona, that screeching stop doesn't just move people, it generates electricity. Enough to run stations, charge cars, even cool the air. A system once meant to slow us down is now fueling the future. What else are we overlooking in the chaos of city life? Let's find out. The hidden power of a screeching stop. At Belvich Station in Barcelona, the trains stop like they do anywhere else. Doors slide open, passengers spill out, and another group rushes in. It feels like routine. But what's happening beneath the surface is anything but ordinary. Here, the simple act of stopping a train is generating power, enough to help run an entire part of the city. The secret lies in regenerative braking. This isn't a brand new invention. It's been around since the days of old trolley cars, but Barcelona has found a way to scale it, quietly transforming its metro into a rolling energy source. Rather than letting the energy from slowing down vanish as heat, the system captures it and converts it into electricity. This electricity isn't just used for lights or station fans. It's being redirected into something bigger, like charging electric vehicles. Through a program called Metro Charge, TMB has taken a familiar process and turned it into a forward-thinking solution. Trains, once purely consumers of energy, are now contributors. It's not flashy. It doesn't make headlines every day. But this shift represents something powerful. A city using what it already has in smarter ways. And in a world chasing energy solutions, that quiet screech might be one of the most overlooked answers yet. How regenerative braking works. Regenerative braking might sound futuristic, but the science behind it is surprisingly simple and incredibly clever. At its core, it's an energy recovery system. Every time a moving object slows down, it loses kinetic energy. In most cases, that energy disappears as heat, especially in traditional braking systems that use friction to stop motion. But regenerative braking flips that equation. Here's how it works. When a train begins to brake, its electric motor switches roles. Instead of drawing power to move the train forward, the motor becomes a generator. The momentum of the spinning wheels turns the motor's shaft, which in turn generates electricity. That electricity is then captured and either stored or immediately used. In electric vehicles, this recovered energy flows back into the battery, offering a small recharge every time the driver slows down. For metro systems, it can be routed into the station's electrical grid or even to other parts of the city. The beauty of regenerative braking lies in its dual purpose. Not only does it capture energy that would otherwise be wasted, but it also reduces strain on physical brake components. Less heat, less wear, fewer repairs. It's efficient, sustainable, and quietly brilliant. Especially in public transit, where stopping happens constantly, it turns every slowdown into a small, powerful opportunity. Barcelona's big idea, Metro Charge. Barcelona didn't just settle for saving energy, they reimagined what to do with it. The Metro Charge project took a decades-old system and gave it a bold new purpose. Instead of letting regenerated electricity power only lights and ventilation, TMB asked, why not send that extra energy somewhere else useful? That's where electric vehicles entered the picture. Across several metro stations, surplus electricity from braking trains is now being redirected to nearby EV charging points, called Electrolineras. This setup skips the usual process of feeding power back into the city's larger grid. Instead, 
It goes directly from train to car. That local transfer cuts down on energy loss and lets the city offer lower prices to EV drivers. At around 33 cents per kilowatt hour, it's an attractive deal. By mid-2024, 16 stations had this tech up and running. Together, they're generating enough power to cover the full energy needs of 28 stations. It's a closed loop powered by motion. A train stops, electricity flows, and a vehicle on the surface gets a boost. Metro Charge isn't just an energy solution. It's a vision of circular efficiency, where infrastructure doesn't just serve people, it powers what comes next. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. Cooling the underground and cutting carbon. Regenerative braking isn't just about saving electricity. It's also about heat. When trains break the old-fashioned way, all that kinetic energy turns into friction, which then turns into heat. And in a metro system built from concrete, tile, and steel, that heat has nowhere to go. It builds up in tunnels, making stations stuffy, uncomfortable, and harder to maintain. Barcelona's regenerative system changed that. By capturing energy instead of releasing it as heat, the entire subway environment cools down, literally. Since implementation, temperatures in the system have dropped by about one dirtaires. That may sound small, but underground, where airflow is limited and heat accumulates fast, every degree makes a difference. Cooler air means less strain on ventilation and air conditioning, and less wear on brake components. There's a bigger picture, too. Less heat means less energy wasted. Less energy wasted means lower carbon emissions. According to projections, the Metro Charge system could prevent nearly 4,000 metric tons of CO2 emissions every year. That's the kind of quiet climate impact that adds up especially as cities like Barcelona prepare for hotter summers, more frequent droughts, and increasing climate pressure. In short, regenerative braking doesn't just move people. It cools, saves, and protects. The cost of innovation and the roadblocks ahead. For all its promise, Metro Charge didn't come cheap. Barcelona's pilot phase cost around 7.8 million euros, no small price for a system that mostly works behind the scenes. And while TMB expects to recover that investment in four to five years through energy savings and EV charging revenue, not every city can afford to take that leap. Beyond cost, there are technical hurdles. Not all metro systems are built the same. Some use alternating current, AC, which adapts well to regenerative braking. Others run on direct current, DC, which is trickier. DC systems often lose more energy in conversion and require additional equipment to make regeneration worthwhile. That means more complexity, more cost, and more hesitation. There's also the matter of public perception. EV infrastructure is still catching up in many places, and not everyone agrees that city funds should support electric car charging. Without long-term data, some city planners hesitate to invest in something that feels unproven despite its success in Barcelona. Even in Spain, gaps in the national EV network remain wide. So while the potential is real, scaling it will take time, investment, and public trust. Innovation always comes with friction. But in this case, that friction might just be the fuel. A model for the future and who's watching. Barcelona may have taken the first big step, but the world is already watching closely. Metro Charge has sparked interest far beyond Spain. Transit delegations from New Delhi, Vienna, and other global cities have visited to learn firsthand how the system works and how it might be adapted back home. The community of Metro's benchmarking group, Comet, a network of 45 transit systems around the world, has also taken note. 
Through Comet, TMB is sharing its findings, offering a blueprint for others looking to boost efficiency and lower emissions without tearing everything down and starting over. Even in the U.S., where public transit upgrades often lag, there's growing curiosity. New York City's MTA has explored regenerative braking for years. With hundreds of stations and one of the busiest subway systems on Earth, it has massive potential to save energy if the city can commit to the upfront investment. The beauty of Metro Charge isn't just the tech. It's the idea that our cities are already full of overlooked energy sources, hiding in brakes, footsteps, water flow, even noise. Barcelona proved what's possible when we stop letting it slip away. Others are taking note. The real question now is, who's next? Why it matters and what comes next? Regenerative braking might seem like a small shift, but it taps into something much bigger the hidden potential of urban life. Every day, we walk past systems that hum, spin, heat up, and slow down, losing energy in ways we barely notice. What Barcelona has done is reframe that loss as an opportunity. That's what makes Metro Charge so compelling. It's not about building brand new tech. It's about reimagining what we already have. Trains were always stopping. Stations were always powered. The difference now is intention, connecting old routines to new goals. And the stakes are high. As climate change accelerates, cities are being forced to evolve. They need solutions that don't just reduce emissions, but also make existing systems smarter, leaner, and more resilient. Regenerative braking is one piece of that puzzle, but it points toward a bigger mindset shift designing infrastructure that feeds itself, adapts with use, and works in harmony with the city around it. Barcelona's Metro Charge might not be perfect. It won't fix climate change alone, but it shows that change doesn't always require revolution. Sometimes it just takes looking at what we've overlooked and deciding to catch the energy we've been letting slip through the cracks. The next time you hear a train screech to a stop, remember, it's not just friction and noise. It could be power. Barcelona's experiment reminds us that cities hold more energy than we think, tucked away in motion, heat, and habit. With the right systems, even something as ordinary as a braking train can help us build a cleaner, smarter future. Challenges remain, but the blueprint is there waiting for the next city bold enough to follow it. Because sometimes, the key to progress isn't speeding up. It's learning how to stop efficiently, stay curious, and keep looking beneath the surface.